I am Mark, <laughs> yes. All right. Well, hello there, Mark Risen Hopkins here, coming at you once again live from Google I.O. 2013. I am here with Jay Kim, who is the director of R&D for Apex and uh, Apex Labs, and you guys have done something, caught my eye. I'm, I'm a big fan of augmented reality, been writing about it for quite a while, uh, since it was, you know, a dream in an iPhone. And so, uh, when I saw what you guys had over here, I wanted to get a little bit more deeper dive. Uh, you've got some, uh, some glasses, uh, an immersive display, and you got all kinds of uh, interesting applications. So, let's dive right in. Uh, what do you guys do, and uh, what's, it, what's it for? So, Apex is a, a smart glasses software company um, that actually built uh, something that we call the Terminator Vision for the Army. Okay. And that means that we had a military pair of glasses with an embedded camera those within and uh, we're able to pick off faces in a crowd and you know if I'm seeing a bad guy then it just shows the results of uh, that that bad guy that identity who he is what he does where he lives you know just delivers it to you on your heads up display so that's where we actually got started by delivering the software stack for military smart glasses systems and we started transitioning some of that technology off to the commercial world and we started targeting um, you know, large businesses whose workforce is largely mobile and largely deskless. So people that don't traditionally have access to computers. So the idea is that we're going to use our software development platform and link up with smart glasses hardware guys and uh, the software integrators and working with them to provide a platform to deliver real-time information to smart glasses users. Um, say for example, someone in healthcare, an EMT who Wants to uh, wants to get help from a doctor who's remote is able to grab his uh, camera feed and then push it out there, and at the same time the doctor is able to give him step by step instructions as to how to treat you know uh, a trauma patient. Um, logistics, you know, being able to use glasses and navigate through all of the different uh, warehouses, and I don't really know where the next item is. Well, guess what? Smart glasses tell me where they are. So that's uh, that's what we do as a company. But here at I/O. We were invited by YouTube to uh, implement our hands-free computing paradigm user interface to interact with uh, YouTube videos completely hands-free. Right. So that's what you know. That's what we've got to show here. Okay. So can you, uh, yeah, just walk me through like what we have on this setup, and uh, you obviously won't be able to see what I'm seeing, but you'll be able to uh, not directly. Uh, it's, I've, I've tried this once before, it's very interesting. It's, not, it's hard to describe to someone who hasn't put some, putting like something like this on, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing as I'm controlling the interface, right? Yeah, so this is actually my cheat screen where you know, this shows exactly what you're going to show, uh, what you're going to see on the glasses. So as far as the headset itself goes, we took the Epson Moverio BT100 uh, transparent displays and we added, um, we added sensors to make these glasses smart. We added a five megapixel camera, we added a microphone, and we added a nine axis motion sensor. And what that allows my software to do is it allows the software to understand what you're looking at, it under, allows me to understand what you're hearing, and it allows me to understand your orientation. So let's, let's get in tight on this, Kenny, if you can, because it really is an interesting device. It's, it's bigger than the glass, obviously, but it's, it does a lot more uh, uh, than the glass. So you can kind of the, show the thickness of the, it's not that thick, really, the, the, the plastic portion. And, you know, it's uh, 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 stereoscopic, right? right. So, so the, the exciting thing about this display as opposed to glass is that this allows you to, this allows me to have a canvas that's in your line of sight mm -hmm. and I'm able to draw into both of your eyes, which means that I can do stereoscopic 3D content, for example, and I can do 3D overlays on top of real world. So, you know, fundamentally, it's a, it's a different way of visualizing content than uh, glass. Right. So let's let's uh, let's change devices. You hold my microphone for a second, sure. and uh, you can kind of walk me through because the 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 hands-free interface is something that's interesting too. Is you you don't you don't speak out to it like you do with some of the. Oop, lost the nose piece. Get it back for you. Yes, thank you. But uh, you don't speak out to it. You uh, move your head. <laughs> A lot of use. Yeah, it's been out. used quite a bit today. Let's see, all right, you got it. Make sure. Oh, I got it backwards, don't I? Got it backwards. There we go. You have to hold it just as you're putting it on, and then it'll stay in place. 
place. All right, there you All go. Right. There we go. All right. So I'm watching a video here. I think All right. Have so there. let's uh, let's actually have you double tap on the right side of the sensor twice. Okay. Yeah. Right Just, here. Yeah. Double tap it. All right. All right. You're back on the video wall. All right. And as you're moving your head just across, mm -hmm. sweep your head. You're getting a all. You're getting a wall of video, 360 degrees about you. Oh, and wow. uh, if you see a video that you like, you're mm -hmm. able to tilt your head up or down and just you know, stay there for a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. Wait for that red thing to... Uh, okay, here, into your, there you go. Okay, so now you've selected the video. Okay. And you can do uh, playback controls also using your head. If you nod your head up like this, it pauses. Right. So let's do that again to start the video playback. And if you tilt your head a little to the left, it rewinds. Yeah. And then a little to the right, and fast forwards. So you're able to completely control um, all of your YouTube video completely hands-free. Mm. Yeah, it's very cool. And then to get out, you again, double tap it. It's very responsive. I mean, you don't really have to, you only have to hear it once. and. Uh, and you understand exactly how to use it. Yeah, it's an intuitive way of uh, interacting with just you know, a transparent screen where you don't have access to a touchpad. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. We caught all that, Kenny, I hope. Uh, it's a fantastic little device. It's a lot of fun. So, like, as you said, you're targeting the, uh, the, the, the commercial workspace. What is, what uh, kind of, is it just a softer target? You, you, what made you decide to do that instead of go after the, uh, the consumer space? Well, we think that there's, a, there's just a tremendous amount of uh, value proposition that we're putting out to all of our big clients where return on investment of all of these people that are wearing glasses is an easier sell, frankly, than uh, some of the consumers who tend to be a little less forgiving. Um, if I'm able to go and prove that using smart glasses is going to be able to cut down on the number of accidents, enhance situational awareness, um, increase worker safety, and also improve worker efficiency across all of the industries that I mentioned, logistics, field service industry, healthcare, then you know that's an easier sell for them to take the leap into the next wave of uh, mobile technology. So this, the, I can also envision kind of a big data angle this too as well, because you know right now uh, in a lot of industrial applications, RFID is kind of the name of the game, or sometimes it's uh, QR tagging or, or things like this, but. We're talking about a system where you could probably, I mean, you could easily scan across like a, a warehouse floor and, uh, you know, acquire the data and uh, with, with the sensors and, you know, you not only be able to acquire it and store it, but you'd be able to see it in real time, kind of what, what's available or, you know, what your inventory is or something like this. Yeah, something that smart glasses bring uh, that no other mobile devices bring today is access to real-time data, heads up and hands-free. And that's the crux of our software is that we do so much of um, so much of our algorithm and underlying research is being able to smartly detect the context of the smart glasses user. So RFID being one example, but taking uh, QR codes, which are you know becoming more and more ubiquitous, my camera that's embedded into these smart glasses is able to go and pick up QR codes just discreetly in space, and just through that, without the user having moved a finger is able to know exactly where you are, exactly what you're looking at, and uh, you know I can go and tell the user based on those actions and based on that contextual knowledge, whatever it is that user needs to know right then and there. So, so data entry becomes a much less arduous task potentially. So uh, what are the sensors? Let's, let's, let's go down the list of all the sensors that you have uh, available on the platform so we can kind of get a sense of what's, uh, what's possible or what may be possible with the system. Right. So. Our definition of the, the smart glasses requires at least three sensors to be to be worn on the head. Okay. And it, it has to be a camera, five megapixel camera that we have in this case. It can be you know any resolution. Has a microphone and then it has a motion tracker. It has an accelerometer, has a gyroscope, and has a magnetometer for compass. So it's able to tell me your pitch and roll of your head motion, and it's also able to tell me, you know, through the camera what it is that I'm looking at. Okay. And uh, are, 
can you, yeah, I guess, well, you've got it uh, hooked into an uh, Android device here. Are you able to use any of the Android sensors that are available on devices to couple that with the, the data you're acquiring through the, the goggles? Right, of course. So our software is smart enough to, to realize that Android devices themselves can be also used as a control device if we so chose. So being able to get access to sensor data, for example, GPS, so that we're not carrying GPS twice, um, you know, we, we couple it to the host device and the phone. Okay. And uh, so I, I wanted to, because uh, we, we talked earlier, and, and you mentioned, uh, you know, you're not, you, it's, a, it's a platform. It's not necessarily a package, or, or you're not interested in selling the hardware. And uh, you, you definitely don't want to, even though you're targeting the, the, the commercial sector, limit this away from uh, folks that want to hardware hack this up or, or, or add to or, or use it for uh, personal reasons. So um, I guess the most interesting thing is for, for those, those types of hackers and developers in the audience, what, what is the release date? When can they play with what you've built? So our platform, which includes the, the client side user interface and uh, user experience, alongside some of the logic that's required for augmented reality and smart glasses, um, alongside the server side logic that manages all of it, and you know, pushes real-time data is, we call it Skylight. And Skylight's going to be available at the end, at the end of August, um, running on, you know, a set of uh, these BT100s, and all of the sensors that uh, power these glasses we're also going to make available at that time as well. Fantastic. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time today. This is a, a really cool thing. We're going to be watching you guys uh, as you progress forward. Uh, as you say, you bet the company on it, so we're going to see, we're going to see if that bet pays off. Uh, Mark Rizzo Hopkins, founding editor of SiliconANGLE, will be back just shortly with more Google I.O. 2013 coverage, so keep tuned right here, we'll be back.